Hello, this is Travis Elliott with Natural Control Devices, and today I'm going to help you set up your new Wi-Fi MQTT current monitor. Uh, the Wi-Fi MQTT current monitor essentially connects to your Wi-Fi network and then establishes a connection to an MQTT broker through which it uh, sends uh, telemetry on its readings on an interval. Um, this device is always powered, so it needs a 12 volt DC power supply. Um, we won't really be getting into too much of the hardware today. This is more of a setup tutorial um, on, the, on the device from a software standpoint. Um, so we'll just jump right into it. So whenever you receive your new uh, current monitor sensor, uh, it should be in setup mode out of the box. So if you connect the supplied 12 volt DC power supply uh, to the sensor, you should see the LED on the board is flashing blue. Uh, blue flashing LED indicates that it is in setup mode. Um, one other thing I'd like for you to do is to go to ncd.io and I want you to search for Wi-Fi MQTT current monitor. And that's gonna bring up this guide, the Wi-Fi MQTT current monitor sensor user guide. And it's basically going to cover everything I'm going to cover in this video. Um, it's going to have all the setup information, how to use the device, how it works, all of that. Um, so this is just kind of an accompanying video to kind of walk you through it step by step. So since the device is powered up on my desk right now and the LED is flashing blue, I'm ready to actually configure this device for my Wi-Fi network and for my MQTT broker. So what I'm going to do on my computer is I'm going to search for Wi-Fi networks and the device is going to show up right here. Now this is the device's name uh, as you might call it. Uh, it's NCD-5390. Now 5390 is going to be unique to the sensor that you have because 5390 is the last two bytes of my device's MAC address. So yours is not going to be NCD-5390, it's going to be NCD-something. So anyway, uh, we'll go ahead and click to connect to it, and it's going to ask us for a password. The default password is NCD, all capitalized, capital B, E-A-S-T, NCD Beast, with NCD and the B being capitalized. So we'll click join. And once we have a connection to it, we can open a tab in our browser and we'll enter 192.168.0.1. And that's going to bring up the sensor's built-in uh, configuration interface where we can actually enter the settings for the device. Another thing you can take a look at right now is uh, the status page. So open up another tab, put in 192.168.0.1 forward slash status with a capital S and that's going to bring up the device's status page and here we can take a look at the uh, readings from the sensor so I've got a uh, I've got a 1500 watt or 13 to 1500 watt light bulb connected to the CT right now and I'll just turn that on and we'll see this uh, reading here will go from 0 to 1325 which would be about right that's 1340 some milliamps we can see its MAC address. Um, we can see its IP address, which is of course zeros because it's not connected to a network. We can see the interval is set to report at um, 5,000. This is in milliamps, so it'd be five seconds. Uh, its transmission counter, um, which is at 123, and you see it just went up to 124. Uh, its firmware version, uh, this is a brand new product, so we're on 1.0.0. .0 .0. Uh, MQTT connected is false, so that makes sense. MQTT URL, we haven't entered one yet, so that's blank. And the port is defaulting to 1883, and the MQTT client ID is defaulting to NCD underscore sensor. And of course the last publish is zero because it hasn't published to the broker yet, but that will update to the epoch time uh, whenever it's actually connected to the broker and has successfully published. And then the topic is currently blank because we haven't entered anything. So that's the status page. You're going to be able to access that status page right now while the device is in configuration mode. Or once it's actually connected to your Wi-Fi network, you can access it again there. Uh, and we'll, we'll look at that uh, after we actually connect it to our network. 
So back on the configuration page, 192.168.0.1, we actually need to connect this thing to our Wi-Fi network. Um, my Wi-Fi network is called Starlink and it's showing up here in the list. It will show all 2.4 gigahertz uh, Wi-Fi networks in the area that it can see. So you'll select one of them. Um, my network is actually open, so I don't have to enter anything here. Oops, don't want that. Um, I'm going to leave DHCP enabled, but you can assign a static IP address if you prefer. Um, once again, up here we have the MAC address of the device and its firmware version. These are read-only fields. You can't change these. So basically all I need to do is make sure my network is selected here, which it is by default. Um, soft AP, you can change the soft AP, SSID, and password if you like. Uh, sensor settings, you, here you can change the report interval. Um, I've got it set to 5000 here. And then there's this current calibration value here. And I really don't recommend changing this until you take a few readings on a couple of different devices and, and see, how it, see how it looks. Uh, we, we can figure this before we ship it. Um, so generally you shouldn't need to change this, but if your current readings are just a little off and you're really particular, you can adjust this value a little bit. And MQTT, so this is where we're going to enter all the information about our broker. Now I'm using BBOT as, as my uh, MQTT broker uh, for testing. Um, so I'm going to enter in the URL for uh, BBOT here. And then BBOT doesn't take a password, but it does take a username. So I'll plop that in there. Uh, it does not take TLS. It does not need a password. Um, the settings topic here, uh, leave that blank. Um, that's reserved for future use. We're not currently using it. Um, and the message format, I recommend leaving this blank to start with. This is how the uh, payload is structured that's published to your broker. There's more information about this in the user guide, um, but by default, let's just leave that blank for now. And I want to change the topic that it's publishing to. I don't want to just publish to um, sensor ID, which is this token here is going to re be replaced by the MAC address of the device. Um, I want to publish to article underscore channel forward slash the sensor ID. Okay. So I've got my broker URL, the broker port number. I've got a client ID in here. You can change that if you like. This is just kind of what the sensor is going to be named uh, whenever it connects to the broker. Um, I've got a username entered, um, and I just changed the topic format. So we're going to click Save Settings. And what's going to happen is the device is actually going to reboot at this time, and our computer will actually automatically detect that that um, network is no longer available and it's going to connect back to um, our default network which for me is my Starlink network and I'm just going to watch the device and the device has a green flashing LED right now now that indicates that the uh, the sensor connected to your Wi-Fi network and then actually connected to your MQTT broker which means everything's working so if you've got a green flashing LED right now you're in good shape. So we can go ahead and open up an MQTT software client. I like to use MQTT.fx. And I'm going to connect to um, that BBOT broker. And I'm going to subscribe to article underscore channel forward slash hashtag. Hashtag is a wild card. So anything or any topic or any message that's published to a topic that starts with article underscore channel forward slash, I'm going to see. So we configured this thing to publish to article underscore channel forward slash uh, sensor ID, which is going to be the MAC address of the, of the sensor. So we're going to just click on subscribe there. And we will wait. And there we go. We got a transmission from it. We can see its MAC address right here. That uh, uh, colon colon sensor underscore ID colon colon was replaced by the MAC address of the sensor. And we can see we are, in fact, getting publishes about every five seconds. And in the, uh, in the message that's being published, or the payload here, I can read all of the information about the device. So right now we're getting a milliamp reading of about 1,319 milliamps. If I were to shut off my light, uh, this should go to approximately zero, and it does. Um, I can see the device's uh, IP address 
on the network, which is Starlink. Um, I can see a SMAC address in this message. I can see the RSSI, which is the, uh, the signal strength for the Wi-Fi connection. Uh, negative 37 is very good. Uh, this number will uh, go down, which, you know, if you go to like something like negative 90, uh, the worse that it gets. Um, we can see the firmware version in the body here, uh, the interval it's publishing at, its name, and the timestamp whenever this was published, and that's uh, UTC epoch time. So what we can do here is we can just go ahead and grab um, this, uh, this name here, like that, we'll just copy it. And we're on the same Starlink network as the device, so we can actually open up a tab here and put in that uh, name, dot local forward slash status with a capital S, and there we go. We've got um, uh, the status page open to the device over the network. So here we can see the last time it published and we can sit here and watch this and we can see this increments by five every time because it's publishing every five seconds. We can see the topic that it's publishing to. We can see that uh, MQTT connected is true. Um, so it has a valid connection. We can see the broker it's connected to, it's RSSI. So we can monitor the device through a web interface here. And of course, down here at the bottom, we can see the actual current being drawn through the device. I just turned the light back on. Um, so we should see that adjust. Yep, right there. Um, so that pretty well covers the uh, configuration of the device and uh, monitoring the status of the device, both locally over the over the web interface and remotely through an MQTT client, uh, like MQTT FX here. Um, the last thing is uh, firmware updates. So we may make some improvements to this device or bug fixes, um, and you can download those, those new updates. So if you go to github.com forward slash ncd dash io, That'll bring up our GitHub repository. Um, and under repositories, you can search for Wi-Fi underscore MQTT. And uh, yeah, we've got the current monitor. We have a we have another device in this series that we've already released. Uh, release that was the temperature humidity sensor. That's that's that here. For the current monitor, you're gonna want to click on the current monitor firmware. And you can get in here and you can check for firmware updates. Right now you just see version 1.0.0, um, which matches um, the firmware that's, that's currently running in the device. So I don't need to do a firmware update. But if you did, you can put in uh, the device's uh, address there, forward slash update. Oops. And... Uh, Update is with a lowercase u. And here we have the uh, Elegant OTA uh, firmware update interface. Uh, what you would do is you would come in here and you would click on download zip. And that's going to download a couple of files to your computer, one called firmware.bin and one called spiffs.bin. So you'd go into Elegant OTA and for firmware, um, you'll click on choose file, go to your downloads, find that folder you just downloaded, go into version 1.0, that's the firmware, and then it's going to upload that firmware. And then after that's done, you'll open this interface again, and you'll upload the spiffs file. Now it's important to, to, to understand, um, and I'm just waiting for the, for the device to to update here. So we're gonna update, open the update interface again. We just updated its firmware, now we need to update the file system. So for file system, you go to choose file and you click, select spiffs. Now it's important to understand here that before you upload this, you gotta remember, this is going to overwrite your settings. So your MQTT broker URL, your topic, any settings that you entered into this device are going to be wiped by the spiffs upload. Now I should say spiffs upload is not always going to be required whenever there's a firmware update. Um, the only time we need to update the spiffs file is if we actually 
added uh, some configuration. Um, so you know we might add another setting uh, to the to the interface, and at that point it would require a SPIS update. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to add a uh, README inside of these firmware update files that will say SPIFS update required or SPIFS update not required. So if it says SPIFS update not required, don't upload the SPIFS. It's unnecessary and that way you don't actually need to re-enter your settings. So just keep that in mind. If you, update, if you upload the SPIFS to it, you're gonna have to reconfigure your device. So that pretty well covers it for today. Um, I hope this was a good, quick rundown for you guys. And if you have any questions, uh, please head on over to ncd.io and hit on, click on contact us and reach out to us and we'll be happy to help. Uh, thank you and have a great day.